Yo, ladies and gentlemen, fucking Dallas out there. You are Thursday night AMP with your boy Sugar Duncan, and I approve this message. He's had his own podcast, Joe vs. the World. He's also been a frequent guest on the Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare. And he hosts the Fun Time Pro Wrestling Arcade Series that you can see on YouTube and MikeandTomPresent.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Gagney. Hey guys, how's it going? Really good, Joe. Thanks for being on the show tonight. It's a pleasure to have you on, finally. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, uh, let's give everybody a little bit of an introduction. I know I just named a bunch of your credentials, but I always like to give our guests a chance to give their own background in their own words. So what first inspired you to do Joe versus the World? That actually it was mainly an offshoot of uh, the, uh, the new Figure 4 online website. It started in 2005, I want to say. Yeah, that's when Brian Alvarez started having the, the daily podcast. And it's actually a guest on two of the real early editions, because Brian is really needed warm bodies. Yes, and I somehow weaseled my way on, and I thought, you know what, that was a lot of fun. Maybe I should try doing this myself. And this was, I think, was Angry Marks running back then? Were you doing shows at that point? Pretty close. We've been running for about six years now, so pretty close to that. Yeah, it was something um, I thought, like, oh, well, let's give this a try. I was, uh, I was friends with uh, the Cubs fan on Brian Chopla. I talked to Lucha, and he had a website I'd done stuff on. And we collaborated, and we thought he could post. Yeah, it just kind of started, and it got a lot bigger than I ever anticipated it would. Obviously, you're, uh, you found other things to do besides just Joe versus the World, as was the case with your Fun Time Pro Wrestling Arcade series, which... I believe it's become quite the cult favorite on the internet these days. Yeah, that whole thing started. Kind of the, the new trend online is people doing reviews of old games. There's like a million people doing that. No one was pro wrestling video games. Or if they did them, they were doing more of the point of the video game and not as a wrestling fan. I've been on a podcast, Mike and Tom Present. They, uh, he said, sure, let's try it. So we did a show, and, uh, and people really liked it. Now, have you always been a video game aficionado so it was just natural to tie in wrestling and video games or was it more that wrestling brought you into video games and you played wrestling video games which way would you say it went i was not into video games outside i didn't just play wrestling games but i think they really combined my big love so and i think that's the same for me with the kids like i think i think the wrestling culture is kind of similar to the video game culture they kind of kind of bring interest so so surprised they can intersect it like that. Yeah, there's always seemed to be a healthy amount of overlap between the two worlds, so no real surprise for anybody to be in video games to be into wrestling or who likes wrestling to play video games, so it could go either way in that case, but you've dusted off a lot of uh, interesting wrestling video games, some good, some bad, and some downright awful ones in your series. Yeah, I mean, one of the, the challenges of, like, you have to take something that's not real and put it as an actual sport. And that's a challenge that I appreciate. They do it very, very well. Like, even years later, I'm scratching my head what they were thinking. And I try to, I try to be fair in this. If something's bad, I admit, and if something's good, I agree. There's a lot of people around. What do you think is the uh, all-time worst wrestling game? It could be one that you haven't even reviewed yet or one that's already been in the series. I'm kind of torn. There was um, the first WWF game for the Nintendo the game is just called WrestleMania. It's a horrific game. Like it's it's just so bad. Like anyone who plays this, uh, you don't even really grapple. The controls are terrible. It's ugly. It's no fun to play after a minute. Um, it's between that or there was a very late NES game called The Ring that was that was my last review. That game is horrendous because oh, it's just like the graphics are hideous. Everyone is basically the same. If you just do reviews, like you say that's the worst of all time, I don't need to play it. But it's between those two, I think. What would you rate as the best one that you've reviewed? Best one I've reviewed. Well, my favorite video game of all time is Virtual Pro Wrestling. I haven't gotten that. So I'm going to start doing those um, AKI games. I think starting with episode 25, we're going to start diving into those. But the best one I've reviewed so far is. I still have a very soft spot in my heart for WrestleFest, the arcade game. And I think, like, I mean, people remember that to this day. They, this is like something, oh, I think I'd say that. No, they remember distinctly. Like, when I did their review, I didn't even, I barely had to go back and play the game. Like, I remembered all the details, all the characters, all the little details. And that's just a fun game. I've a 
before, I wish they bring it back on some kind of platform, update it, because I think it would be a huge market for them. I think wrestling fans got really excited about a month ago when there was an announcement that WWE had trademarked the term WrestleFest, and everybody thought, oh, great, they're going to bring it back. They're going to do a new version for 2012. And they were just protecting intellectual property. They announced that they had no plans to make new games, so it's kind of a bummer. I know. I saw that crushed by that, too. But, um, yeah, with all the, the retro things they, they hide, they have retro T-shirts and a lot of their... DVDs are hyped towards older fans. You think they'd make some kind of uh, some kind of bone to the gaming market, but maybe someday. Yeah, especially with the WWE Network coming around in some point this year. Obviously, it got postponed. Originally, they were talking about WrestleMania weekend, but that was way too early for a launch date. But they could certainly bring back something like WrestleFest to uh, coincide with the launch of the network because a lot of the content of that network is going to be Old school nostalgia, anyway. Yeah, you would hope that the, you know they would throw something there. I don't even. I said before I post a game show on that network, but I don't know. I think Funtime Pro Wrestling Arcade would be a good addition to the WWE Network. Sure, call me. <laughs> That's a word at the Vince. Put in a call. Joe's available. He's willing to do it. Do you get weird requests at times for wrestling games that you would never think of reviewing in your life, like? Uh, People send you messages online or YouTube or wherever to say, like, review wrestling from the Sega Master System. Title match pro wrestling for Atari 7800. Have you had any weird ones like that? I've gotten, uh, yeah, I think I've sent a request for that Atari game to hook up with Atari. I haven't emulated it yet, but I've sent a lot of the big ones, and uh, at least as far as the, uh, the 16-bit made that era goes. But, yeah, there are a lot of, there, there were a ton of these video game data. Like, every company seemed to try their hand at the wrestling game. I even noticed that uh, one of the ones you reviewed that caught me by surprise was that Micropros, which I remember for making baseball simulators, actually had a WWF simulation. And watching the video of that one was pretty eye-opening. That was, um, I remember just seeing ads for that one. I'd never played it until I, I did the review. And I remember, yeah, stuff like that. Like, you know, I get notes of people saying, like, oh, my God, I played that. Well, that was like, maybe they let us computer and things like that. And another one that I didn't remember from the mid-90s that popped up in your series that I honestly can't believe I didn't play at some point. Maybe I did and I just forgot about it because the 90s were kind of a haze anyway with college and whatnot. But the, you had a uh, WWF game that was styled Mortal Kombat. Oh, you mean the, the WrestleMania arcade game? Yeah, I remember um, playing the, the, the game after WrestleMania. If I want to play Mortal Kombat, I would play Mortal Kombat. And that was like, no, there was the Royal Rumble game in the arcade, if I'm remembering correctly. I think the four WF arcade games were superstars, Russell Stepp, at WrestleMania, and I think Royal Rumble. Kind of a bummer, they kind of fell off the last two. Out out of all the games, WrestleFest has to be the highlight of their arcade games, but there is something almost uniquely campy about that Mortal Kombat WrestleMania game, because seeing guys not bead but, like, bleed symbols of their characters. Like, watching Yokozuna bleed sweat and Brett the Hitman Heart bleed little hearts. <laughs> That's just great stuff. Yeah, a lot of, like, the big part of the Mortal Kombat game is the gore, and they really do that. They had people, like, Yokozuna bleed food or uh, Undertaker, I don't know, or something that's absurd. Like, I mean, those, those games are trips right now. You're like, I can't believe, like, you know, this one's through but that thing was a place at the time. So that's well, Peter just got back into the conversation, so I'm going to give him a chance to ask you a few questions as well. Peter, the floor is yours. It's a King of the Ring game. I've never heard of that game. That was just stuff I um I never heard of it either. It came out in I think uh, four. I want to was well after the, like what everyone thought was a game. They they released it. WWF and it was just like just doing research and uh, looking. I've been saying, like, oh, it's another ring game. I think I found it online, like, their game play, or website, you can play NES games online, and one of them, when I tried it, it was horrendous. I thought it was, like, a joke that someone made that, but no actual game you were paying money for, it, so, yeah. Yeah, you just come across all kinds of really weird things. No, I always crack up when I see uh, you talk about the character you making a triumphant return from yourself. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it was, um, it wasn't, 
I think it wasn't like I remember that WrestleMania challenge. Like the only way you could do the championship pose was playing as a generic character called you. Stupid, because like you know, why wouldn't you want to play a game with all the characters? Where there's no replay value playing as one generic character. They actually brought back for um, King of the Ring already a game made. Now, I'm assuming my favorite game, I think one of my favorite games growing up was No Mercy. Is that going to be a, a one or a two parter episode? Because that was like probably one of the greatest games out there. Yeah, that's, um, that might be a one parter. I don't know. I'll have to see this. It might be a super episode. I actually made for a 2000 No Mercy. I had one part. Um, it would erase all your data if you used the created roster and like the. If it didn't put in that half of me, and I was like, drawn. I don't know. That's still a great game. All the, I mean, those, all those games, like my favorite games, are like, I have fun memories. I was in college when they came out, and we would just have, we would have like, you know, the, the battle was doing WWE Revenge, which goes for hours on end. Oh, yeah. In my house, it was, it was a debate no mercy or NWO, WCW Revenge. It was either or. We knew we were going to have a great game for hours, me and my brother playing that game. We would just have everyone on the phone play that. It was a great time because wrestling was really popular at the time. I just I remember like Disco Inferno, Alex Wright. I remember hitting uh, my brother with the uh, stop sign, putting him in the rings of Saturn. That game brings me back, man. I tell you. Oh yeah, I remember. Um, one time I was with my friend, and he was a character that used this big headbutt, so he would like pull his head back, and then like at the same time I hit him in the back of the head with a chair, and it was perfect timing. He was busted over. Like, we all have, like, a million cool memories like that of awesome things we did in those games. Got a quick question for you, Joe. Uh, what do you think of the modern era of wrestling video games making you pay for the game twice? That you get a certain amount of characters when you buy the game, and then you have to buy all the characters you actually want from downloads? I'm not, like, I don't, I don't, I don't play a lot of modern wrestling games. Like, I haven't played a SmackDown game in a few years. I just don't have the time down and learn. Like, games today are complex. There's a lot to do, but back in the day, like, you know, I had no game to play for a few months and learn it second and have some fun for a bit. So, but yeah, stuff like downloadable content. I just remember, um, I remember Fire Pro D, which was a Japanese game released for the Dreamcast, which Dream, I remember Dreamcast was past price, uh, price last, like 50 bucks. So I bought one, I got Fire Pro D and set up like a, I forgot, like a net zero account. And like that company release move for free that you can download like new things that weren't the game. I remember things were awesome. Like, I have to pay for content that, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of downloadable content. Now I'm wondering, have you had a chance to play WWE 12? No, I haven't. I actually don't have a PlayStation 3 or Xbox, but um... Well, my brother, he got me uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2011, because up here in Canada, um, instead of John Cena front and center, they got Bret Hart with the Canadian flag in the background, so... <laughs> one of those rare, you had to get limited edition. I told him, if you're going to give me this game for Christmas, make sure you get the Bret Hart one, because I don't want to have that damn John Cena on my game. Well, the first time, actually, I had the first time game, but here comes the pain was my favorite. Uh, it, had, it had this really cool rock this time. You just had this perfect storm of guys, like Goldberg was in the game, Brock Lesnar was in the game, uh, like Brandon Field, like Kevin Nash. It was just a really cool roster, a lot of cool features, like you can ball, and string, and like parking lot. There's a lot of things that out the next year, and it was. I had the next. It was really not nearly as much fun, but now that's. Uh, it's really weird to do. Like I'm hot and cold. I'm like, here comes the pain. Like one of my favorite video games ever. That comes pretty close to. Uh, what was the name of that game with? Uh, it was WCW, but it was the only game without a ring in it. Oh, that was actually default. Oh jeez, that has to be up there for the worst game. I think that's. I don't remember how much I played. But um, yeah, that game is reputable, horrendous. There's definitely plenty of candidates for worst wrestling game out there. I don't think we have to leave it at backstage assault. If the fun time pro wrestling arcade series continues for a while, there will be no shortage of wrestle craptacular video games. Do you think there will ever be a point where you'll be like pull the plug on fun time pro wrestling, or do you see it going on and on and on? Yeah, uh, as far as I know, like there's a lot of games I still want to cover, and a few more. I probably haven't uh, discovered yet, so I don't know. It'll go on for the foreseeable future. 
Well, I'm sure that people will be throwing suggestions your way for games that you haven't done yet based on this show and based on watching all the past episodes. But I can throw out one. I know you said that there was a uh, Fire Pro Wrestling games that you wanted to get into. They made some spinoffs for Game Boy Advance. And if there's any way you can format those into a uh, into a video podcast, then by all means, do those on YouTube. But I don't know if you can put Game Boy Video in that format. That might be tough. I hope so. I mean, I remember I had that Fire Pro game. I brought I bought a Game Boy Advance just to play that Fire Pro game. I love it. But um, I'll see. That's always down the road. But I hope to get to a couple more Fire Pro games, even though they all... I want to say, they're, they don't change a whole lot, but I'm sure I can find new things to talk about. I've got a couple of Japanese pro wrestling games that I have a Dickens of a time playing because I have a Sega Saturn with a uh, converter cartridge that allows you to play imports. But the problem is, I don't even know what match types I'm selecting. Yeah, I remember some import games I bought. Like, I would buy screen-by-screen situations to figure them out. I remember some games. Like, I think first pro wrestling is pretty close to WrestleMania 2000 as far as... Uh, features and whatnot. so that was always pretty simple to figure out but yeah, i can like you know japanese and like oh, what i'm doing here like oh i might have barbed fire match i don't remember that happening but of course it always really struck me as odd that you know i could actually work my way somewhat through the wrestling japanese games because it's still basically pro wrestling in one form or another but i bought an iron chef game and god help me i have no idea what i'm doing in the iron chef game at all I mean, there's, there's like one point where you can unlock a video of one of the Iron Chefs preparing a dish, and it's like you're walking around Kitchen Stadium. But other than that, no clue. I don't even know how you're winning or what winning in the game would be. It's just bizarre. Yeah, how, would, how would you win? I don't even know. I guess maybe you'd have to get to a cook-off and tasting and then have you know the, the uh, chairman come out and declare you the winner. But I've never even seen the chairman in the game. Yeah, if I ever really run out of games, maybe I'll toss it that in. All right, Peter, any more questions you got before we uh, start to wrap things up here? Well, I'm just wondering what the next game is on the on the list here for you, Dojo. Uh, the next the game I just recorded was uh, for WWF Steel Cage Challenge, which uh, came out in 1992 for the uh, Nintendo Entertainment and the Sega Master. So that was uh, another uh, loser in the well for the WWF. Sounds pretty good. Yep. Any thought of doing like a crossover into like the boxing games and see how that compares since we've had so many boxing celebrities and wrestling over the years? Like, uh, like ever reviewing like uh, a Mike Tyson's punch out since we've had Mike Tyson involved in WrestleMania? Oh, and do uh, do uh, people lose their late to wrestling? I could, I could do a hell of a show on Mike Tyson's punch out. I, uh, God, I owe. When I, was, you know, I loved that game. It took me, I didn't beat it. I kind of like in the fourth grade. I actually didn't beat the game until I was in high school. But um, that would be a little gentle. But uh, yeah, I could do a hell of a review of that. It's a hell of a game. It, no, it I, forget the, I forget oh. the platform it was on, but what about um, like some like Simpsons wrestling? Is that not coverable? Or I mean, that is, uh, is that it... would fall in the territory. I've heard people like, people say that's a terrible game. But I'm sure I can get some of the mileage out of that. But I think that was a PlayStation 2, I want to say. So I suppose I could uh, give that a whirl. But that's probably down the road. All right, Stevie, any uh, more questions for Joe here? I think we're just about at the point where we're going to wrap it up. But uh, I want to give Joe a chance to throw out some plugs for Twitter, for the Funtime Pro Wrestling Arcade, for anything else he wants to plug. So, Joe, the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, you can go to YouTube. Dot com slash Mike and Tom present for uh, archive of all the fun time arcade episodes. Uh, you can search for like Joe Gag Arcade on YouTube and uh, they'll all come up. The Twitter is just simply Joe Gagney. J O E A G E. So that's just my plug. So there you go. Well, thank you guys for um, posting videos uh, on the website. I've got a exposure. Uh, I appreciate them being picked up by you. No problem. We really enjoy the videos, and we look forward to them when they come out. So uh, keep on doing the Fun Time Pro Wrestling Arcade. We'll keep on putting them here on the website. And thanks again for being on the show with us tonight. All right. My pleasure. Thank you, guys.